and first our first speaker is Alex Tan region sales head ID Mayor. so can we have a big round of applause for him for the first panel discussion all right then our second speaker is Amal okay can it just change yeah Amalina Syaza Aliaza Binti Shazreel Fariza. She's a marketing executive with Pika Aids. So, can we have a big round of applause for her joining on the stage? Our third speaker, Sandy Sheik. She's a you know marketing director with Puratos Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. So, can we have a big round of applause for her to joining on the stage? And our moderator for the session, B. Linang, Head of Digital Strategy and Communications, Stewards Asia Center. So, can we have a big round of applause for B. Lin. So, over to you, B. Lin. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a good tea break. So it has been a, quite a heavy uh, morning on digital technologies and marketing. So we are shifting gear a little bit. So in this session, we're looking more at the meaning and the purpose of your work. So um, I'm just going to briefly introduce the topic here. So we have Beyond Profit, Harnessing the Power of Brand Purpose and Social Responsibility and Advertising. First of all, the panel will introduce themselves and then we'll get on to the discussion. So my name is Bi Lin. I'm Head of Digital Strategy and Communications at Stewardship Asia Center, which is a, a, a non-profit unit established by Singapore Temasek Holdings. And we are in the business of advocating and educating on stewardship and sustainability. Okay, over to you, Alex. Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, I am Alex Tan. I'm based in KL. I am the region sales head for ASEAN, uh, representing IDEMIA. So, and I take charge of the uh, business operations for, uh, for ASEAN in the field of smart biometrics. So IDEMIA is a French conglomerate uh, based in Paris. Uh, what we do is uh, in the uh, area of responsible biometrics, the issuance of trusted identities uh, for the greater good of the general public. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Before I start introducing myself, I would, uh, I would like to ask a question. Who here likes to eat? Raise up your hand. <laughs> Are you sure? I don't see everyone. I guess everyone likes to eat, right? Because you have to eat every day. Right, okay. Thank you. So, <clears throat> I have something better for you. So, my name is Shaza and I am the marketing executive at Picha Eats. Uh, Pizza Eats is a so social enterprise and we partner sh with chefs from the refugee community. So how is this better? You get to make a change through food. So, yep, that's all for me. Thank you. Interesting. Um, hi everyone, good day. I'm Sandy. Um, I'm um, from Paratos, Malaysia, Singapore and Brunei. So we're actually a Belgium-based company. We Aligning to Shaza's um, companies as well, we actually a food manufacturer. So besides food, if you like real Belgium chocolates, if you like cakes and bread, we are actually the, um, the behind the scenes uh, key people. So we have a group of researchers, um, chef and all this as well, who actually uh, transform technologies and of course, uh, providing all these um, bakery solutions to our partners as well. So if you need anything that is uh, in requirement in line of bakery solutions, we do have all these uh, behind the scenes secret recipes to share with you as well. So that's the basic. Thanks, panelists. So uh, the discussion will be broken down to two parts. Well, first of all, I just want to say that I'm sure all of you here are here for a reason, right? You are here to learn and you have to network and the ultimate reason is to make money. But I just want to ask you, like, you know, um, is, there, is there any reason why that you should, in your job 
and in your work, look after the planet and humanity. Perhaps you might think, you know, that's evil to me, I'm just to make money. So let's see whether purpose is relevant to businesses. So that's the first part we're gonna answer. Second part of it is, now if you have a purpose in your business, how do you harness that particular purpose and your storytelling to make uh, you know, your brand even more powerful and get more user base? And that could ultimately e lead to bigger profits. So that's two parts of the discussion. So first of all, I would like to ask Alex. So Alex, this is the first question to you. Um, Why is purpose beyond profit important in business strategy? Okay. So just to answer your question, uh, I would like to start with a quote by Simon Sinek, right? a uh, very famous leadership uh, author. Uh, he's American, by the way. So he cited that uh, money is like fuel. Cars need fuel but the purpose of the car is not to buy more fuel. The same is for business. The purpose of business is not just to make money, it's to advance a greater purpose or cost. So with that, um, that is why um, having a purpose within a business is very relevant and uh, equally very important in this modern setting. So the two, two, there are two fronts of why this is important. So the first being, obviously, business exists uh, on a primary reason that uh, they, we need to uh, adhere or need to uh, provide services to customer needs. So there is a, that's, why, that's the main reason why we exist as corporations, right? To, to give a solution to customers' needs. But over the last decade, there is a change in consumers' behavior, particularly from the millennial and also on the Gen Z. So corporations that need to be relevant nowadays has to uh, aspire to meet those new requirements from the marketplace. Um, so there are a couple of reasons uh, why corporations need to do this. Uh, firstly, it's for the sake of consumers. And uh, on that point, it's to do with customer loyalty, right? So if you have a purpose, uh, and if you speak to the millennials, particularly when they are now, there's a term called eudaim eudaimonia, right? Uh, where they are seeking to, to uh, engage with brands and fulfill, fulfilling their, their aspirations of uh, buying their products uh, in, in response to their own moral beliefs. It is a sense of getting fulfillment uh, of doing good, right? It's a Greek, uh, Greek, uh, uh, it's a Greek work, and um, the other thing is to enhance uh, uh, the brand positioning of a of of, of the brand. So, uh, so first thing, customer loyalty. With, with that, you will get more repeat purchase and better positive word of mouth. I spoke about uh, having brand, uh, it's there now. Yeah, so the other thing is about uh, having a positive outlook on the brand that builds company reputation for the brand. And for the, for the company, this actually helps with uh, getting responsible investors. Firstly, um, for, for the company, the investors that you're seeking would help to uh, allow you to be more sustainable because more, more and more companies now, investors, are looking at uh, getting companies to invest in um, who are more socially conscious because rules and regulations now are changing and uh, the carbon uh, taxes may increase uh, for the, for the, for the, in the future and hence complying to some of these legislative uh, procedures will help with improving your business in terms of profitability, right? Uh, that, that, that's one front. The other front is to talk about, it's on the side of market positioning. So for companies that actually embraces uh, purposeful impacts, this will help in, in terms of getting yourself out from the crowded place, getting more uh, relevant in not just having more per, uh, profits, but there is a, there is a, there's a reason to it. 
Third is to do with uh, sustainability, particularly in terms of innovation and getting more products for your company. It is, um, there has been literature talking about um, because we venture into new renewable, renewable and more sustainable uh, uh, initiatives, new products and new solutions may, 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 may come by. And also basically in the HR field, uh, when we talk about HR itself, it helps with recruitment, employee branding, uh, also on talent management. But that said, all the CSR that I've mentioned just now, uh, that is only one part of the, uh, the enabler for a purposeful uh, company. The other part is the ethics, which I will also talk about it, uh, where you talk about responsibility like AI, responsibility, security, uh, and other responsibilities for that matter. Thank you. I would like to add one point for that. So um, why purpose beyond profit is important is because I believe it contributes to community building. So building a community with shared uh, values, life values, shared mission, shared beliefs, basically shared uh, principles and gathering all those people, like-minded people in one community. So that is, uh, that is what I think uh, is important. And as for Picha Eats, we are building a community that is working towards a better future in the sense of everyone has, a, has equal rights for hopes and opportunities. So I will take one example, if I may. So in Picha Eats, we use our, num our number one way to um, incorporate a purpose into advertising is through social, uh, social media and it is through um, storytelling. So we all know, right, storytelling is a very powerful tool. And then, yeah, so over the years, uh, we, we're around almost like eight, nine years. So over the years, we've been telling these stories about the chefs, like their journeys, like what happened to their countries, what happened in their countries, what made they come here. So um, not just that, not just the bad, not, it's not a bad story, but not those negative angles, but also successful stories, what are they doing now and all that. And then um, throughout all these years with all, with all the stories, um, we realize that, we're, we have that we have that community. So for example, in this Palestine and Israel conflict, right, we do have chefs from Palestine. So when this whole, uh, when this whole conflict is happening, we realize that people come to us to buy food from the chefs, from, from our Palestinian chefs. So they also um, sent us messages saying that, um, can you please uh, tell the chefs that we are praying, we are praying for you and your family back in Gaza. We are here for you if um, you know if you uh, if you need any help or anything. So this itself proves that just through advertising, you are able to provide a platform for people to have opportunity to help. Right? Do you agree? Do you agree? Raise up your hand. <laughs> right. So that's just one of the examples that, that I would say community building. Mm. Th thanks very much. Okay, so we seems to have established, right, it is important, right, at some point in time. Um, because also, you know, the Earth's resources are limited anyway. So at some point, if you don't look after it, it, it will deplete and your business will not exist. So now let's go to, to Sandy. Sandy, your business practice, purposeful branding, and you know, you have a, a, mm -hmm. a, a sustainability agenda as well. Can you yes. tell us how you integrate that into your business? Yes, um, aligning to what Alex and Shaza has actually mentioned, right? I think the key thing is about who we are and behind the scenes. Because it's very important here, as you can see here, um, our tagline uh, for Proratos is basically is about um, food uh, innovation for good. So when you have the innovation for good, so the for good means is we actually providing like better life, better planet, better health as well. Things we actually do here is it's not just um, for the company, but it's actually meant for you and the next generations. Do you know how real Belgium chocolate is made? What does it made of from? Cacao beans, right? Do you know how many years that we need to actually plant a cacao tree that we can actually harvest the cacao pot? And then subsequently, when we actually um, you know, harvest the cacao pot and then subsequently we go through the fermentation and so on, it took a long, long process. But just to make a piece of bar of chocolate, 
for you as a consumer. But at Puratos, we actually work with farmers around the world. We work directly with them. Um, this is why um, we actually offer sustainable chocolates because every kilo that um, the customers um, buying from us, we actually have 10 cents uh, euro um, per kilo. Uh, we will actually goes back to the farmer. And the farmers basically, we use this to actually build um, schools, better facilities. We have farmers that are actually currently working in Vietnam, Philippines, uh, Mexico, uh, Ivory Coast, Papua New Guinea, and so on as well. Because back then, technically, cacao farmers, they don't have the um, establishment to actually work directly with manufacturer. So what basically they do is, they get little money for, for the hard work that they actually put on, but they only get this little money from the third party. So when we work directly with them, they actually get fair trade, okay? And at the same time, this is where we actually come in, the key thing that we wanted to actually explain about not just making profit, but really giving back to the community. And again, now we can still enjoy chocolate. Earlier, we actually were, were discussing, do you know, like in time to come, we're not sure whether we have enough cacao tree or not, or the cacao pots to produce chocolate in time to come. So this is why we have actually starting to talk about planting more trees. We're talking about um, being carbon neutral by 2025. You know, we will actually be working closely with our customers to actually promote sustainable chocolates. So that is actually part of the behind the scene. And like what Shasha mentioned, it's very important. It is not um, making profit, but it's actually giving back to the community. So that is also one of the key vision that we actually work as well um, from Paratos. Like, as you can see here, our commitments to you and future generation doing good for the people and the planet. So that is really the key thing because while we are making profit here, yeah, Alex yeah, and Billy, we need to actually think about the people because why? We do have our next generation. So that is a little key thing that I wanted to actually highlight as well on this part. Mm. Thanks, Andy. So um, I hope you're sold because that you need to have some long-term thinking as we talk about here that the resources will be depleted for future generations. You need to look about, think about your future generations. And the other thing is what Shaza is saying, that community building is important. Why? Because there's a win-win strategy to this. It all comes back to you. Because if you do good, the pe people will buy from you, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the other takeaway here. So now I want to go to Ad come back to Alex here. Alex, so now that if your business is purposeful, you're all hunky-dory and you know, good to go. How do you leverage that and how do you create a brand ident identity that sells your business? All right, so uh, one way that we could do this is to obviously you incorporate your ethos into your uh, purpose statement. Um, and that uh, with all good communications is how you basically you know, send that message across. Uh, so all, it's all about storytelling. So um, I'll, I want to share a, an example of how a, a responsible uh, advertising can look uh, to, to, to look like. So I've sh this is an advertisement by Dove. I'm not sure whether you guys have seen this before. It's a six minute long uh, advertisement by long form. The shorter one is about two and a half minutes. Uh, it would be great if you can, you know, after this, uh, this, this engagement or seminar, you can take the time to look at this advertisement. So this advertisement basically um, talks about uh, sending a message to the, uh, the women at large that it is okay to be yourself and you are more beautiful than you think. Um, so in this day and age where you know, uh, people would like to, or they, how they define beauty is they look at, uh, in comparison with the celebrities, movie stars and whatnot, right? Um, and, and they want to get uh, to that perfect beauty. But perfect beauty, it's, it comes in many forms. Uh, so this is one way where um, you know, it, it showcases the, the purpose behind redefining beauty. You have the power in your own hands to, to, to define it uh, yourself. So if I may, I would also like to share about what we do at Idemia. So yeah, so at Idemia, we um, also uh, make a positive impact on a global scale uh, through our programs um, of uh, uh, CSR initiatives uh, that's aligning to 12 of the 17 uh, UN Sustainable SDG or Sustainable Development Goals. Um, we, we use our technologies for the greater good to um, 
um, to empower or to unlock the world for many citizens to get their trusted identities through the use of biometrics, um, through the use of responsible AI, uh, to the use of good uh, cryptography standards. So, um, so okay, what? Okay, so the other thing is um, recently in 2023. Uh, we were awarded the Platinum Certification uh, for the third year consecutive basis uh, for our programs uh, by EcoVadis. EcoVadis is the most trusted sustainability rating and now we are placed in, one of the, in, to in the top 1% of those participating companies. To, uh, so uh, yeah, that's one way uh, how you can do it and that's how uh, we do it in IDEMIA um, instead of Obviously, talking about uh, advancing profits, but we do it with a purpose. And it has to do with, uh, on the larger side of not just CSR, like I, like, like I talk about, CSR is just one part of it, but we do it in another, uh, another part on the ethical ma uh, basis. So, for instance, um, AI can be used for many uh, use cases, but we use it in a responsible manner because in the field of biometrics where we capture fingerprints and then we, in, in a way, use AI to get them more accurate and more fair to be able to be more inclusive uh, to, to cater to the larger public uh, audience. But we also recognize that we have a uh, responsibility to them and, and that's why we, we use uh, the best in class of cryptography to encrypt them. So it's not just about purpose, uh, like I say, uh, just about profit, but the purpose here is to get everyone to be uh, um, uh, you know, protected in, in their ident own identity form. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Alex. So whether you're still convinced or not, but sustainability, uh, you know, doing good for the environment and the humanity is here to stay. So I just want to take a, a pause here I just want to do a side note here. We are non-profit, and this is the platform that uh, we have created called stewardshipcommons.com. If you have a success story, or if you have best practices, or any learnings from your sustainability journey, you are welcome to log in and contribute your story in here. It's for free for now. Um, so just, just, to, just, just a little marketing on my side here. Thank you. Okay, next. I want to go back to Siaza, okay? So Siaza, now I, I, I want to ask you about how you advertise your purposeful business. So what are the strategies that you take? Okay, so before I answer this question, I would like to ask you a question. I'm sorry, I really love to ask questions. <laughs> okay, so do you tend to help people that you know nothing of, or do you tend to help people that you know at least a bit of backstory? Anyone wants to answer? I see you nodding your head. Which one is it? Sorry? The latter. The latter. So meaning, uh, what's your name? Bonono. Okay, so Bonono here, our friend here, so she, she said she tend to help people that she knows a little bit of story of, uh, of this person. So um, one of our um, strategies to advertise our purposeful business is again, by using storytelling to reach the people because yeah, if, you, if you want to get people to help you, you have to help them to know you better, right? So, okay, so there are three things here I've said, narrative driven campaigns, community engagement as well as invitation to impact. So I'm going to talk uh, about the first thing first is narrative driven campaigns. So again, storytelling. Storytelling can be like from social media, as big as social media to the littlest things such as packaging, all those flyers, right? So um, stories can be anything at all, but what makes a story special is when you make it relatable to the, p to the person that is reading the story. So for example, right, um, there's one story about uh, Fatima, our Iraqi chef. Uh, so she is a single mother, she is also raising a Per, uh, a child with uh, special special needs. So, uh, yeah, she's she is also a refugee. But 
If I want to tell a story, right? Not everyone understands the feeling of being a refugee, but some of you might understand how does it feel like to be a single mother? How does it feel like to be um, a mother who is raising up a, a, a special child, right? So it's the, the key is to make people understand and feel related to what you want to share. So, and then for example, for this post, right, I was talking about um, Fatima and how she handles her struggles and then in between her, her, her jobs like cooking, cooking, she has to take care of her, of her kid. So maybe the people who, who read that story, she will feel like if I am the mother, I would, I would want people to like help me. So like getting, a, we are trying to help people to be in the feet in the shoes of Chef Fatima. So that is what we want to do. So it's not just in social media, it can also be on like meal boxes here. So in Picha Eats, it's not just the home delivery. We do catering, meal boxes and all that. And all these little packagings really matter. It just, it, yes, it is a packaging, a normal packaging. Everyone has a packaging. But what makes it special when people deliver, uh, when people receive the meal box, they will have the stories as well. So they can read while they eat. And while they read, while they eat, they will feel like, oh, I'm actually making a change through some, uh, for someone's life. I'm actually contributing to their life. I am actually a big part of an impactful journey. So that is what we want to do. So we keep on pushing, pushing, and pushing these stories. And in the end, people will digest this and feel like, okay, it's a part of me already because I'm reading about all these stories and I want to help them. So, yep. And that, that's one. And then second is community engagement, like I mentioned just now. It's all about community building, right? Uh, and again, because of stories. Stories can just be about words, and anyone can build words, anyone can build sentences. But it's the experience that you experience yourself on the first hand. So one of the, uh, one of the ways that we advertise our purposeful business is by inviting people to come, just, to just come to our like, hangout stuff, like, people uh, with our chefs as well. So they don't get this time like meeting refugee chefs um, every day, right? So this is the time that they can, they can cherish and then they can, finally, they can finally connect with each other. So it's like bridging the gap between the refugee chefs and also the customers. Yeah, uh, but in this case, people are not just customers. People are a uh, community in our case, yeah. So, so at, at least when people experience that, they know that we are genuine. So like I said, it also, in, it also contributes to community building. So uh, uh, I, I have something that I want to show later on. So it's also regarding about community, this community engagement and why it's important. So yeah, stay tuned, stay tuned on that. And then the last one is invitation to impact. So it's basically just call to action stuff. Just Say whenever you, um, whenever you meet someone, you can just talk about it, just share, and then hey, let's be. Did, did you know that you are actually that you can actually make a change and a, make a very positive impact to someone's life? So it's just you being out there, inviting people like hey, let's join our impactful journey. So yep, that is just one true storytelling and true community engagement. Thanks, Shazza. That was very insightful, isn't it? So, I mean, what I take away from that is that you, you have to be really genuine. This has to be yeah. really from your heart. And the engagement and the... So you, we, we all talk about uh, online engagement, a lot of it. But that's so impersonal, right? At the end of the day, um, SEO, you know, or whatever, Facebook and etc. But I think the in-person engagement is so important that sincerity really come through. So I would like to ask Alex, Alex, which particular strategy do you use? And then I'll ask uh, Sandy afterwards. Well, yeah, I, I think overall I will resonate with what uh, Shaza and you have mentioned. At the end of the day, it's about being authentic. And uh, the experience and, you know, uh, whether they, 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 feel, they feel that or not. So a lot of times as practitioners, we tend to just, you know, like you know, like a machine or sometimes like a broken record, we just undertake a particular campaign. It's time that it's, it's good we reflect this on what we are doing and make sure that uh, what we do has an impact you know, into in, how people are, are feel about it. I think that's, that's, then you will know that whether those campaigns are actually working out well. So it's, it's, 
easier than what uh, is mentioned here, being authentic. But I, I think uh, doing what is best and then going down to the ground, speaking to them, whether it makes a difference, I think that's, that's vital feedback. Um, the next thing is really, um, really engaging with the customers and at the same time, how do you actually create the experience? So if you have a story to tell, how do you do it? So the key thing is if you were to go digital because now digital is, there's so many messages, it's so cluttered. What makes you different? What makes you stand out? So the key thing is how do you engage with your customers is the key thing. So um, at Paratos, um, besides um, talking about the program, besides we educate our customers about the sustainable chocolates as well, or also talking about other initiatives that we have taken uh, to actually um, make better planner, better life and better health approach as well, we actually have um, customer engagement activities. Like we really bring chocolaters from other countries all the way to Vietnam, to Ivory Coast as well, to meet the farmers directly. And this is why um, even uh, we have um, the subsidiaries in Japan as well. The chocolate that they use um, by the chocolaters are actually real Belgian chocolate and the Belcolat, and it's actually sustainable chocolates. And they share their stories and the journey on their homepage, at their um, packaging, you know, and they actually talk about it uh, with their end consumers. And this is really the key thing because it's like really coming up from your passion is like really sharing not just the storytelling, but you're doing what you really like, you really enjoy, but at the same time, you're sharing this message to the end consumers. And that's add value to it. So that's the key thing that we also need to take note as well. So what I get from that is product differentiation. It can be a real differentiator for your product. So now I want to, no, it's not without risk. So I'm gonna go back to Siaza, right? Siaza, tell us okay. your experience. Are there any risks? How do you mitigate? Yep. So, okay, I saw during the one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, introduction just now, right? I heard some of you are content creators, right? You with the cat, right? So I want to ask you, have you ever experienced hateful comments or anything? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah, so content with a purpose will make a lot of difference, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, we, you know, we all are humans. We all have different opinions. And sometimes we, we hate for, for no reason. Well, that's not me, lah, but yeah, some people do that. So uh, one, of the, one of the things, one of the risks that we do, uh, that we have an experience is because, again, we push stories, we push these stories. So people tend to think like, is it really genuine? And then, is it just for content? And then, is it really real? And then, because of this, some people would also have, um, like, they would have the guts to post a story like this, like, hey, Picha, leave refugees alone. And then, if you don't know Picha, uh, people who, re uh, who came across this post, they will be, they, they can, they can, they, they can uh, uh, trust this post alone um, because they don't know Picha, right? And then that time, this this happened years ago. And then uh, back back at those back at that time, we didn't have anything else because we're still like still learning. And until now, we're actually still a small business. And then we don't really have some things, some something that would protect us that time. And then um, these contents again, because it can be perceived as um, exploitative than being than being genuine. So people would think, uh, people, would re people would then think that, okay, this is just content because this post, hey, Picha, uh, leave refugees alone. They, they read all of the points that this, person, um, that this person wrote on the internet and then they will feel like, okay, I'll, I, will I will believe this guy. So the, the way to mitigate this from happening is for us, we do this impact report. So we do this every year, we update. We ask the chefs, how, how do you feel now like after joining Picha? How's your income? We try to be transparent. And as a small business, it's very important for you guys to be as transparent as you can. So 
hence why it's very important to have these impact reports, especially when you're working with people, right? And then, yeah, so this, uh, this, this impact report can be found on our website. Um, and again, at the end of the day, people believe what they want to believe, but it's just here. So it's like a proof that you know, we, can counter, we can counter you. And also, again, this is why it's important to have that community. Because if something bad is happening to you, at least that community will back you up. Like, okay, we've been, we've been to Picha uh, Hangouts, we've seen the chefs, and then we've seen how Picha treats the chefs, so it's, it's nothing like Europe. So this is why it's important to have uh, be as transparent as you can and also to have that community to back you up. Hmm. And next, Sandy, you guys have anything to add? Well, I think, uh, rightly say, um, the key thing is really to um, have the, uh, what will be the valuable content? That's the key thing. Is it time yet? All reality, it is a buzzer, okay. so... Okay. 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 <laughs> Very quickly. I just wanted to say that another way of making sure that it's genuine and true is to go to an award. You have an independent judges, the judges will, credible judges will say whether you are for real, whether they can measure your impact, right? And so I want to say, this is a bit of a marketing of myself, this is Dual Leadership 25. If you have a good project, a good story to tell, and you want to submit, we list the top 25 projects that makes impact on the environment as well as humanity in Asia Pacific. And uh, the list, typically we do this annually, and the, the, the honorees will be announced at the Steward Leadership Summit held in Singapore in December. So the application opens today. So um, take a look if you want to. Okay, now we very quickly take away, just very quick take, take away from each of the panelists here. Alex? So yeah, I th uh, for me, I, want, I just want to say that ethics and purpose they are not mutually exclusive. So it is not the purpose, uh, this is not the pursuit of profit at all costs, but profit within that purpose. And we know that uh, you know, in, in a field of marketing, uh, things like this that we talk about are very intangible, right? If you compare to an actual product. But uh, it is up to us as uh, marketeers, the professionals uh, like us and the practitioners that we can, in a way, brand them, make those intangible things tangible so that it, it becomes our new identity, and in a way, shapes our product as well, our offering. So that is my key takeaway to, uh, for you guys for today. Thank you. Okay, so for my one t key takeaway is, uh, would be never underestimate the power of community that you build for yourself. Okay, because you know, at the end, they will be there for you and for your company. But again, remember to build a community, it takes years. So keep doing that. You're doing great. Um, my key message is basically start now with you because it is only you who can actually start now and join the program, join us together. We can actually make better lives, better planets. So that is the key messages that I wanted to urge everyone, be it individual or company, begin today, start now to join the program. Yeah. One last point for me is collaboration, partnership. It will be a win-win strategy for everyone. So that's it. Thank you. All right. So can we have a big round of applause for the key panelists? So do we have any questions? Like uh, it has been a very interesting topic, an interesting presentation that they have showcased. So, any questions from the audience? All right, Mohitosh has a question, so Ayush, if you can run. Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you for the amazing panel. Uh, I just had a question. Does the motivation behind the CSR matter? Because a lot of organizations, as you all said, right, there are multiple purposes behind doing the CSR. Like some of them are just to create a USP or to like, you know, because it's within the leg legislation or like, you know, some people are buying carbon credits right now from the farmers just to offset their and become carbon neutral. So does the motivation actually matter or just the fact that good is happening should be enough for us to, you know, uh, take pride in 
the CSR that's happening? I'll take a stab at this. Um, I think the motivation is very important. And if you, you can have any amount of rules and regulation. You can have any amount of uh, reporting, metrics measurement, for example. If it's not real, driven by a genuine a motivation and genuine intent, these are tick the box exercises. It will not, and um, Sanjay talk about transparency. It will show. In this world, now everybody is digitally connected. People know, you know, somehow if you're not real, if you're greenwashing. So I feel that genuine intent um, is important. Motivation is important. And how do we measure that? Very hard. You have to ask yourself, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it really boils down to your values and who you are and what you are as a person and what legacy you want to leave behind and your business wants to leave behind. I will add on to that as well. It is also about for the future generation because we want to set really good values as well because we are who we are as of today. But what about our future generations? So that is actually another motivation that we can actually think of as well. It is actually for them. I hope that answers your question. There's one more question um, over there. Okay, so uh, I have a question. I, I think you, you mentioned greenwashing and that's particularly what my question is about, which is kind of twofold. But if I, and, and bear with me, I, as a person, as an individual, I'd completely agree and believe. But as a, as a person or as, as somebody who's part of the corporate community, um, I just wanna ask, I think first question is, how do we communicate really sustainability and conservation of resources um, etc. without really sounding like we're greenwashing. And I think this question comes from, like for someone like me who is in the medical devices, pharmaceuticals and fast moving consumer goods sector, there's certain packaging that has to suit the function and form of your product. Meaning it's not always, you know, viable to make it biodegradable or recyclable and so on. And then secondly, the thing is, I think, do we, do we overcompensate because generally consumers don't uh, absolve themselves of their responsibility to you know, conserve the environment? And I think in that, it's also a kind of a thing where, I mean, we can say recycle, recycle, recycle on our packaging. However, I mean, in my country, for instance, in South Africa, we, we don't have a really huge recycling culture because there isn't access to recycling. Right? So there's also like a green tax, and I feel like it's almost as if co corporates are the only ones responsible for playing this green tax um, in, 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 in sort of in comparison with consumers. And I think is the conversation, or should such conversations really be directed to corporates and, you know, and, and, and businesses, or to governments and, and, and municipalities around how do you make sustainability more accessible, accessible to the everyday consumer? I mean, we can, we can sell, recyclable packaging, but it doesn't matter if it's all collected and it goes to the same landfill at the end of the day. So I think a few questions and statements there, but I'd like to just hear your thoughts. Thank you. Very valid. Maybe I'll take this first, then the rest can actually join in. I think the key thing is one step at a time. So we don't do everything like 100% recyclable, you know, like immediately. So how we see, uh, even when we work with our partners as well, to them, when we talk about sustainable chocolates, it's actually much more expensive uh, compared to the general chocolates. But when we share with them about the story behind them, you know, when we actually bring them to meet the farmers directly and how they actually plant the cacao um, trees and everything, that's value added. They understand, they believe. So they, they take one step at a time. So they don't change everything immediately because you mentioned they need to have profit making. They have a whole group of uh, employees to take care of as well, but I think we have to start somewhere at certain point. So one tiny little step helps a lot. So instead of um, changing everything 100%, we can start with 10%, then subsequently you grow from there. So this is also part of the, um, the thing that we are actually doing uh, at Paratos. We start with our partners one step at a time, small step, little step, but we are now growing on year to year basis on changing and actually making our customers and partners to move this uh, direction together. The rest you might want to add on? Anybody to add? So I want to add to that. I mean, when you talk about greenwashing and, and, and et cetera, I think one way to circumvent that is to get someone else to tell the story. Someone who, who is just in your community who could testify that you're doing well and doing good. So I, I think that's one strategy, I feel. And the other thing about you saying that uh, recycling and maybe it should be the government's uh, duty, it shouldn't be, it should be the business duty. I think there's a lot of shifting blames here in the world 
absolutely, everybody is thinking the government should do the job, and then the government is saying, I have no money, so the businesses have to fund this. And obviously, there's the less developable and the de developable, right? The developer will tell the less developable, you guys are polluting too much. And who's buying the goods? The developer. So there is a lot of blaming. And I think this has to stop somehow. So in uh, Stewardship Asia Center, we ad advocate the thing that you have to take ownership. You have to take ownership. And, you and I agree with Sanya, yeah. you start small. You start with yourself. You take ownership. And to recognize that the world is interdependent. So your success matters to someone else's success. Someone else's fail, you might fail too. So it's a community, like you said, right? It's all community. And it's all interlinked. And the world is much more interconnected than ever before now with all that digital stuff. Absolutely. So, right. your so very quickly, one last question that we can take. Hi. Um, so when talking about um, CSRs, uh, having a lot of products that are sustainable, uh, environmental friendly. How do you foster brand loyalty uh, among customers when there are so many companies that are joining and jumping on a bandwagon, that sort of thing, right? Especially in advertising where um, information is readily available on uh, within seconds on your phone, on your desktops, anytime. So like in a sense, how would people learn to understand what um, being sustainable is and how you guys can stand out and foster brand loyalty within these customers? I think I can take that question. So for that one, right, this is why it's important for us, like I think everyone mentioned already, like we, we just have to make it out there that we are doing this. And then that's why, again, I'm going to highlight again the importance of community. So if with, with this community, again, they've experienced all the things that you, you, claim to do, you claim to do and they can testify like what Bilin mentioned just now. So when, when people can testify, uh, t testify what you're doing, other people tend to, tend to believe what you're doing and they, they will in the end choose you. So I think it's just putting, putting it out there and really just push the stories out there and making, making people believe that you are doing what you are doing and then having connections, co communities. So I'm not sure if this answered your question, but maybe you can add on yes. it. I think um, from the um, brand loyalty perspective here is the key thing is about to start with them from the very beginning. Because uh, indeed, you know, if you were to do any digital campaign in a short period of time, they come, it's like nowadays when you talk about brand loyalty, do you have? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But how do you actually put yourself as a consumer and at the same time, subsequently, you want to be loyal to a certain brand? Then you start the journey with them from the day one itself. That means if do not think that they are too small to, to start off with or don't pick those only with big corporation only you start off with. Like we mentioned, um, the key thing is start small. So you start the journey from the very beginning and when you have the storytelling and you have the community building from there, both of mouth and so on, yeah? And that is the most credible um, values that you actually add on in brand building. Because in today's um, um, society and also generations, if you were to ask my young nephew and nieces here, yeah, they kind of like, oh, okay, I buy this because you know my friends were talking about that. but. They, they do, probably you're right you know do they actually be educated about the story behind so this is why um, like Billy mentioned it is all about our, our all responsibilities of how we actually educate and share the messages and this is why I mentioned from the uh, from the very beginning is about how we actually create this awareness among for the next generation as well so you can see the, sh uh, the, the change uh, how the involvement of the consumers especially the young ones and then they soon to be the young adults and then uh, soon they will be the, the most loyal customers. And this is how we wanted to start, by educating and sharing these key messages with them. And, and subsequently, you will get your loyalty to sustain the business. And this is a key thing, doing genuinely, passionately uh, with your heart, you know, as, as a very uh, genuine mes uh, message from there. So that's the key thing that we always talk about. Thank you so much, Sandy, and thank you to all the key speakers joining in today. So can we have a big round of applause for our first panel discussion that has been full of energy. 
so there has been you know a quick polls if b lin alex or amelina sandy is your best speaker for the day so the polling will be starting soon on your table we'll be coming up and doing the polls so may one of you win for the trophy for the best speaker for the day so um, over to you ayush so can we have a quick group photograph of the panel group I request Ms. Mitali to present the certificates to all the panelists. First, we have B. Lin. Come on, guys! Huge round of applause for B. Lin Ang. Next we have Alex Tan. Come on guys, show some energy. Next we have Amelina. And at last Sandy Shake. 